When I was five years old, my parents left me in a Tesco superstore uh, accidentally, apparently. I'm trying not to let that hamper my analysis of this company. Uh, I would massively appreciate some likes on this video just to help me through it. Let's dive in. Hey there guys, welcome to the FTSE show with me, Chris Chillingworth. Today we're going to take a look at the supermarket company Tesco PLC, FTSE 250 company. Uh, before we get started, apologies for the croaky nasal voice somehow, I don't know how, but I've managed to catch my second cold of 2020. Uh, in fact, it's probably my first cold because the first time was the proper man flu and I mean... You know, people will joke and laugh, but it was proper flu. Uh, I was out for about three weeks, uh, whereas this one is just a cold. But uh, So I apologise for any sniffles or anything like that at all, or any coughs or whatever. I'll try and edit it out as we go. Um, so we've got a big company to look at today, Tesco PLC. A very popular stock for many beginner investors and uh, a household brand, a household name. Uh, let's dive into the numbers. Okay, then guys, here we go with the uh, analysis then of Tesco PLC in the FTSE 200, uh, sorry, FTSE 250 index and uh, in the food and retail sector. So uh, first thing we'll always look at is revenue, what revenue is coming into the business and uh, what does it look like? What's the overall pattern? Uh, as you can see, there was been some growth between 2008 and I'd say 2011, 2012. We've pretty much been stagnant then from 2012 to 2019. If you look between... Uh, 2012 we're looking at 63 billion uh, and in 2019 we're looking at 63 billion so not a lot has changed in fact it's almost identical between that last uh, what is that eight eight years there uh, they have dropped in the interim so in, in the meantime between then the actual revenue's gone down it has gone back up to where it was back in 2012 uh, but we would call that a flat, flat revenue pattern or trend. Uh, that is certainly not going anywhere right now. The last four years have been, there's been definite a short-term trend there, rising from 53 to 55 to 57 to 63 billion. So they are seeing an increase, uh, but over the long term, they're pretty much stuck where they have been for a long time now. So that's not so cool. Um, when we look at cost of sales, again, we're looking at something very similar, right? So again, back in 2012, 50, 58.5 billion being spent on cost of sales, uh, 59.7 in 2019. So again, not a lot of difference there. And uh, you can see here from the actual margin percentage, uh, i.e. the gross profit margin, they've pretty much been stuck uh, probably from 20, 2008 to 2012, looking at about 8%, and then it's not been so good. It's been about 6% since then. So that's a 6% gross profit margin, but we haven't deducted a lot of things yet. So uh, that gives you an inkling as to where this is going in terms of profit margin. Um, that's not a good start. It essentially means that majority of the revenue is being eaten up by the cost of sales. That's the cost of... Uh, not necessarily running the business, which is the expenses. Cost of sales is the actual goods they're selling. What's the cost of the goods that they sell? So the profit margin is really small, really tight. Um, and they obviously sell in volume, but even then, you know, and they have to sell in volume at those those margins. And they do. That's, that's Tesco's entire business model, essentially, is to sell a hell of a lot of what they sell. And, and they don't make much profit on each one, but they sell enough of it to make a profit. Uh, we hope. <laughs> Let's take a look. So we go through the expenses then. The expenses are okay. They're, they're not a level that's too uh, worrisome. and uh, But they, they do eat a fair chunk of that leftover gross profit. So this is the now of the gross profit that's left over. They're, they historically have been eating up about 30, 30 odd percent, I would say, uh, between 2008 and 2012. And then over the recent years, it's certainly gone up. So the cost, the expenses of running the business has certainly gone up, but not in line with the revenue. In fact, the cost of uh, the expenses of running the business has gone up at a faster rate than the revenue. Because as you can see, these percentages are increasing, and this is a percentage of the essentially the gross profit. So whilst gross profit has been growing, the expenses have been growing faster than the gross profit. Therefore, the percentages have increased. 
Uh, we have seen a drop off in the last two years from 68, which is nearly 70%, let's call it 70, down to 50%. However, 50 is still well high, uh, far higher than, than previous years, right? So, uh, again, it's okay, it's not very, it's not really what we're looking for, uh, but um, the expenses on their own, not a major concern. We can go down to uh, interest on debt. Now, interest on debt has historically been pretty good, pretty, you know, nothing to worry about here. Uh, with a uh, an interest expense ratio of probably what's the average here looking at about ten percent on average. However, the last four years that average has gone to fifty five percent, which would indicate that they're borrowing more money, unfortunately, or it means that they're making less money and the interest on debt is being is is around the same. So we can look at the raw numbers and we can see well that's not the same. Uh, before they were spending about three hundred to 400 million uh, a, a year on interest on debt. We're now looking at figures of 850, 750, 550 down to 500 or so, but still well higher, far higher than 300, 400 million. So we've definitely seen an increase on interest being spent on debt. That might be because debt levels have increased. Uh, so that's something we'll take a look at in a moment. Uh, then we come down to net earnings. So what they, what's the company actually earning? What's the company taking home for its shareholders, essentially? And uh, historically speaking, so going back from 2008 to 2012, about 4% was the going rate. Every single year, roughly speaking, are sitting around 4% uh, net earnings, which for me, nowhere near good enough. Nowhere near what I'm looking for. You'll start to see a pattern in these videos over time. Uh, in terms of what I'm looking for, but 4%, far too small a margin. And this is very indicative of the industry that Tesco are in. Uh, the food and retail industry, specifically the supermarket chains like Tesco, like Sainsbury, uh, Morrison's, uh, Asda are US because they're owned by Walmart. Uh, but we, we look at these companies and we see the same sort of pattern, essentially. Very, very tight margin, net earnings. And... Uh, they're literally fighting for the scraps between each other. And the problem we've got here with these small margins is that all it takes is a spike in taxes one year or a spike in expenses one year or an unforeseen cost that comes along for Tesco. And it will just wipe out any profit and they'll end up posting a losing year. Now, if you're looking for growth stocks, losing years are, generally speaking, not what we want. Excuse the fighter jet that is flying over my house right now. <clears throat> uh, but yeah, essentially, but any company that's in risk of posting a losing year, I stay well clear of. I don't want anything to do with it because it's far, it's, because a losing year coming along is going to severely damage the share price and uh, we're not going to go in the right direction, essentially. I'm looking for companies that are going to continue to post strong, profitable years, year after year. And when you're trading at a margin like this, it just doesn't take much to come along and cause a real problem. And Tesco essentially saw that when they dropped from 3% to 2.5%, and then in 2015, minus 8.2%, they lost $4.6 billion. They actually posted a £5.7 billion loss, but uh, we've re removed extraneous costs out of there that have nothing to do with the recurring business, and it's made it look a little bit better which isn't always the way around it goes, but uh, we've recorded here a minus £4.6 billion pound loss for 2015 for the t for that year. Uh, where did that loss come from? Well, revenue did fall, first of all, whereas the cost of sales stayed the same. So that's immediately no good. Uh, and cost of sales outweighed the revenue. So the cost of... Uh, the the goods essentially cost of what they were selling came in at more than what they sold it for and they made a 2.2 billion loss before expenses of 2.5 billion you know before interest being paid on debt before taxes all of that kind of stuff and that, what it all ed ended up resulting in is a 4.6 billion loss uh that's going to have an impact on share price i can assure you and if you're a shareholder of tesco that year then you probably would have been uh, you would have seen some damage there to uh, the value of the shares you hold. Uh, and then since then, since that atrocious year, they really haven't, they struggled to recover. Uh, 2016, 0.4% net earnings. I, I mean, it's just about a profit. 
235 million, which sounds like a lot of money, but when your revenue is 53.9 billion and you're only taking home 0.2 of that, it's no good, you know, it's it's 0.4%, it's no good. And the following year, 55 million. They actually posted a losing year, but again, extraneous circumstances got extracted from the results and actually made their results look a little bit better. Uh, 55 million is what we've got here. Uh, and then the last couple of years gone from 1.5 to 1.9, so let's call that 2. 2% 2 in earnings last year, it's just no good. It's just too thin on the ground. Not something that I'm particularly interested in investing in. We can look at the balance sheet. Uh, the current ratio is pretty good. It's, I mean, I say pretty good. It's bang on the threshold of it's acceptable. Uh, it's not particularly great. We can look at current assets of uh, 12.6 billion. So the assets that this company owns, Tesco owns, is valued at 12.6 billion. The value of those assets has been falling for the last three years. So that's not not a great sign. Uh, the value of these assets are sitting at the same kind of value as around 2011, 2012. So they're not really going anywhere. There's no real obvious growth there. It's pretty stagnant. Uh, we look at the current liabilities, 20.6 billion. So we've got 12.6 billion in assets against 20.6 billion in liabilities. Liabilities outweigh the assets. And that's that's not good. Uh it, it's, it poses some problems and it's going to cause some issues. Um, I want to look at, certainly want to look at the debt. It's quite important here. So we look at the debt. Uh, they've got some control over the short term debt. They're looking at 1.5 billion of debt. That's OK. That's not too bad in, in the grand scheme of things. But uh, bear in mind these years where they only made 55 million, 235 million, 878 million. Uh, it means they're going to struggle to pay off even the short-term debt at 1.5 billion. But I, I think they would probably have the capabilities to do that. Uh, we look at the long-term debt of 5.6 billion, and our net earnings to long-term debt ratio works out based on their current earnings. How long would it take them to pay off their long-term debt? Uh, three years ago, it was 171 years. So <laughs> that was the year they made 55 million, I believe. So, yeah, basically based on their earnings, that's how long it would have taken them to pay off that debt. That would have been a, a bit of a concern for many investors, and that's certainly going to hamper share price growth. Uh, they've managed to get that down to 8.1 last year, or in 2018. Now at 4.7. It's still too big. Uh, it means that they've probably got more debt than they should have based on their earnings potential, their earnings ability. They need to start making more profit to get that into the green and to continue paying off that debt which has been dropping over the last four years look at that from 10.7 billion down to 5.6 billion so there's been a conscious effort to reduce that outstanding debt uh they just need to get the profit sorted out so they can actually pay it off properly um so yeah debt not in a great shape there are i mean these are all red flags these are all boxes that are not going to get ticked for me in these in these areas the companies that i invest in have all this sort of stuff tied up that a lot of them aren't even using any debt so uh this is again not necessarily uh, a bad thing using debt because if you can borrow at five and use it to turn it into 11 percent, then you know you're doing all right uh it's good debt but uh yeah this is uh there's some issues here in terms of the size of what they're borrowing against what they're actually able to make in terms of profit we can look at the debt to shareholder equity ratio. We can have a look at the retained earnings. So back in 2008, they were sitting on 6.8 billion in their retained earnings pot. That went as high as 12.1 billion by 2012, uh, and then they obviously had to start eating into it in those in those losing years and in the years when they're only making 55 million and 200 million. Uh, they've certainly been dipping into it because it fell all the way from 6.8 billion to 332 million in value. Uh, they've recovered it. It's back up to 5.4 mi uh, billion, but again, we're still under where they were in 2008. So plenty of work to do to get that back up to where it was before. Uh, the retained earnings pot is spendable, though. You can spend that money if you're spending it on. Uh, when I say you can do whatever you want, obviously you're Tesco. But <laughs> my point basically being that the money is there to be spent ideally on buying new assets that are going to grow the business or acquisitions or buying out competitors uh, that sort of thing it's to be used in the best interest of the shareholders 
and the shareholders want the company to grow. And so if you're spending it just to pay off debt or because you've had a bad year, that's not what we're looking for. That's not money being well spent. Uh, and it's not being reinvested in the right ways. So, you know, that's a concern as well. Uh, the return on shareholder equity is really important to me. What kind of return are the shareholders getting on the assets that the company owns? The answer is not much. Uh, we're looking at about 8% over the last couple of years. Uh, there's only been one year where it looked half decent. Even then, it was, still wasn't very, uh, very good. 8%, nowhere near what I'm looking for. To get an 8% return on the assets owned is poor and uh, for that reason they're not looking very good are they uh, the last thing I want to look at is the purchase of property plant and equipment so this is a company that seemingly rely heavily on purchasing property plant and equipment that's probably because they've got a high turnover of plant and equipment I imagine uh, and unfortunately the amount that they're spending on property plant and equipment year after year is very high and that's something I tend to stay away from. I tend to stay away from companies who need to spend heavily on property, plant and equipment in order to uh, compete with their competitors. And again, we said before, there's a highly competitive industry where none of these companies like Tesco, Sainsbury, Morrisons have a dominating market share. They're all scraping for each other, scraping around for each other's customers. Uh, there's not a lot of growth opportunity here for these companies. And we're going to see this. We're going to see these numbers now reflected on the chart. I haven't looked at the chart, but I know Tesco's have been trading around £2, £2.50 for quite some time. And uh, for many, many years since I've been trading, I know the Tesco's price has always been around £2, £2.50. Uh, so I know we're going to see uh, a relatively flat market and a flat chart compared to you know these flat numbers essentially what the what the charts are going to show us is going to absolutely reflect what we're seeing in these numbers here okay so just firstly looking at the time period that we've specifically looked at going from 2008 to present day essentially back in 2008 this share price was sitting at a high of nearly five pounds a share today that share price sits at two pound fifty so that's what i thought and uh, it's been sitting at that price for quite some time, probably since about 2014 onwards. Yeah, not cool. Not what we're after, right? This is not. This is the completely the wrong direction of what we're after. Uh, we want growth stocks. We want companies that share prices rising, uh, certainly over a 10-year period, to be an investor in Tesco, uh, where your share price has fallen from five pounds a share in 2008, and 10 years later sitting at half that price. That's not cool and not something that I'm interested in at all. But this is entirely reflective of the numbers we just looked at. When the numbers coming out are like that, we're not interested in a company with, with poor numbers in that way, or I'm certainly not, because these are the charts that it produces. These are the kind of results that, the, uh, that, that it has on the price. Because other investors out there, the big spenders, where the clever money is, they know the clever money is not going into Tesco. They know that they should not be invested in Tesco because the numbers on their, their statements do not reflect a growth stock. And so therefore, they leave Tesco well alone. Now, Tesco may be a decent dividend stock. And to be fair, I have not checked the dividends for Tesco. So they may or may not be. They are certainly not a good growth stock. So not a company I'm looking for. Um, we're just going to go back and see what's actually been happening with this share price back as far as we can go, we can go back to 19, let me see, when was, share price is currently at £2.50, right? That's the same price that this stock was trading at in October 2000, 20 years ago. We are at the same price that the Tesco shares were at 20 years ago. Uh, I think that tells us everything we need to know. Okay, so the numbers not looking particularly promising for Tesco there. Uh, they're not going to score very well on the leaderboard today. I think that is for sure. Uh, not a company that I would be interested in investing for all the reasons we've just looked at. Um, so, time to get them up on the leaderboard. No need to wing it out. No need to uh, to fluff out these videos. They take long enough as they are. Um, so let's get it up on the board, see how they got on. 
Okay. Tesco PLC. Before I put this up, I am going to put some companies on this board that I know are going to score relatively well. Uh, I'm going for a phase right now of wanting to pick some very uh, popular companies. Companies that, and stocks that are very popular amongst the uh, the investment beginners, I would say. Uh, but at the moment, none of these companies that I'm picking seem to be faring very well on this approach. Uh, and uh, I'm going to have to cherry pick some companies I know are going to be up there, I think, going forward, just so that we're not constantly adding to the bottom, because unfortunately, today, Tesco score minus 60 points, and I think that's very apt, unfortunately. Uh, they're going to f- they're gonna prop up our leaderboard. They're going to be uh, the bottom in eighth place, uh, and unfortunately, the numbers reflect that. You know, All these companies are scored in the same way. They've got the same scoring algorithm and process, so uh, if it scores badly, it means it's not the sort of company I'm looking for. Uh, so let's add them on. Nice and simple, nice and quick. Tesco, bottom of the league. Not good. Before you go, guys, uh, I would massively appreciate a like on this video. Uh, the amount of likes that this video gets will directly be correlated with the amount of people that actually get to see it. So if you're in any way enjoying this video uh, or this series and uh, you want to support the channel and support what I'm doing, the best way you can do that is to leave me a like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe for updates and notifications on the next videos that we're doing. Uh, I'm hopefully moving this to a two a week if I can fit the schedule in, uh, I'd like to do two stocks a week instead of one every Monday. We'll see how that goes. Um, but uh, yeah, plenty more to come. So uh, thank you for watching, guys. I appreciate all the support and I'll see you next week. Cheers, guys.